This is chapter 6, lesson 2, pages 208 to 209, inverses and contrapositives. I strongly encourage you to read these two pages in the textbook and to follow along as I go quickly through what we covered in this lesson. We learned back in chapter 2 that a conditional is structured if P then Q, whereas P is a placeholder for the hypothesis and Q is a placeholder for the conclusion. We also learned how to do a logical converse, which just means that I swap the hypothesis to the conclusion and say, if Q, then P. And what we learned in chapter two was that if I have a true conditional, I don't necessarily have a true converse. Here's an example. If I'm playing basketball at Pope John Paul the Great, then I am a student athlete. That would be a true conditional. If I'm playing basketball here at the school, then I'm definitely a student athlete. The converse of that statement would be, if I am a student athlete, then I am playing basketball. And that's actually false. I could be playing wrestling, I could be playing a variety of other sports. In this lesson, we're gonna learn two new logical operations. The first one is called contrapositive. The contrapositive logical operation is when I switch the hypothesis and the conclusion, and I also negate both of them. This is structured if not Q, then not P. What we've discovered is that the contrapositive is actually logically equivalent to the original conditional. Again, using my same basketball student athlete example, my original true conditional is if I am playing basketball at Pope John Paul the Great, then I am a student athlete. The contrapositive of that statement would be, if I am not a student athlete, then I am not playing basketball at Pope John Paul the Great. And that would be true. We're also gonna learn uh, the inverse logical operation, where I leave the hypothesis and conclusion in their original locations, but I also negate both of them. This is logically equivalent to the converse, but not necessarily logically equivalent with the original conditional. So how do we use this in practice? If you take a look on page 209, you'll see that the example that's given in the textbook is the following example. All runners are athletes. And you could structure that as a conditional to say, all, if, if a person is a runner, then that person is an athlete. And there's something called a Venn diagram that you can draw. And I've drawn four Venn diagrams to use in four different examples here, as you see in your textbook. If a person's a runner, then they are definitely an athlete. So P would represent all persons who are runners, and Q would represent the larger group of people who are also athletes. Anyone who is a runner is definitely an athlete, but it is possible to be an athlete and not necessarily be a runner. So now let's look at the four examples that are in the book. In the first example, number one, we, we are told that all runners are athletes and Leroy is a runner. What conclusion can we draw? Well, if Leroy is a runner, if P, then Q. Leroy must be an athlete. And so that's the conclusion that we can draw. Leroy must be an athlete. Look at example number two. All runners are athletes. Lucia is not an athlete. If Lucia is outside the realm of all athletes, then Lucia is definitely not a runner. And that's the contrapositive. Leroy satisfied our, he, Leroy gave us a plus P, which gave us a plus Q. Leroy was definitely an athlete. In the second example, we're told Lucia is not an athlete. So if we're not an athlete, then we are definitely not a runner. And these two statements are logically equivalent. We can definitely figure something out from that information. Now look at statements three and four. Number three says, all runners are athletes. Linda is an athlete. Can I draw some conclusion about whether or not she's a runner? Well, I know that Linda is definitely inside this realm here of being athletes, 
But I don't know, is she a non-runner athlete or is she a runner athlete? I just don't know. And so when all I do is affirm the conclusion, I don't necessarily affirm the hypothesis. So that's an example of converse. If Q, then P is not necessarily true. It's not logically equivalent with the original conditional. So I can't draw a conclusion if I simply take the converse of a conditional, of a true conditional. In statement number four, it says, all runners are athletes and Larry is not a runner. What conclusion can I draw? Well, that's the inverse. If not a runner, then can I conclude not an athlete? And Larry might not be an athlete, but he might be a non-running athlete. I just don't know. So again, being, uh, taking the inverse of a true conditional does not necessarily give me uh, a true result. And that essentially concludes this lesson. Please make sure you actually read these two pages. Read through the examples on page 208 and 209, and then take a look at this homework assignment, and I think that these, these concepts will begin to make more sense.